Hey, fellow traveler, welcome to the Third Eye Awakening podcast, a show where we talk all about spiritual and psychic awakening, magic, the shift from 3D to 5D, star seeds, ascension, multiple timelines, multiple dimensions, the universe, the multiverse, the Akashic records, all the good things. I am your host, Amy Belair, and I'm so glad to have you here with me today. Okay, let's do this. Hello, my beautiful, beloved listeners. I adore you so much. Do you ever get tired of me saying that? I don't know. I'm clearly one of those very expressive people who <laughs> like, just openly expresses the love that I feel. And my oldest son, who's 16 now, but he was like, he was born an old man. I swear. He's Arcturian. He's absolute brilliance brilliance in a quadruple Capricorn body, Capricorn sun, Capricorn moon, Capricorn rising, Capricorn mercury, and Capricorn Venus, Sagittarius Mars. Anyhow, (laughs) he's the Capricornest Capricorn I've ever met, truly, but he pulls it off magnificently. So he, (laughs) being very Capricornian and Arcturian, is not openly demonstrative of his affection. He's a very loving and affectionate person, but you know, he just doesn't like flamboyantly express it. And he often gets like, (laughs) when I tell him how much I love him all the time, he's like, okay, I get it. I hear you. (laughs) So then I wonder if you guys feel the same way. You're like, yes, you adore us. Great. Move on. Anyway too late. I just wasted a minute and a half of your time talking about it. Guess what? I have amazing news that I want to share with you. First of all, my Patreon is up. And by the time you hear this, my rock fin will be up. I'm so pumped about that. So pumped. So if you love the show, if you love Third Eye Awakening, and you want to support me in any way, both of those platforms are available. They are going to have slightly different content. Sometimes it will overlap and sometimes it will differ because of the nature of the platforms. So Patreon still censors a lot and Rockfin doesn't. So, But Rockfin isn't available everywhere. As I learned from um, our previous guest, John, in the UK, apparently people in the UK can't access Rockfin, which is just like, that sucks. But Rockfin is new and it's rapidly growing. It's got an amazing um, business model. It's a really high vibrational, really beautiful content creation platform. And I'm so, so excited to be part of that family. Patreon is what it is, but it's really accessible for people. And so Patreon is going to be more like a mini sort of... Well, I don't know. Nothing is ever mini with me, is it? Nothing. But anyway, let's just call it a mini lesson. Like just things I want to talk about that I get questions about all the time that I, I'm too, I can't be bothered to turn it into a whole entire course. Why not just put it on Patreon and then you can access it for a very small amount of money. And Rockfin, um, in case you don't know how it works, it's similar to Netflix in that it's like a one monthly payment fee paywall. So you subscribe to whoever you want. I bet a whole bunch of you are already subscribers because Sam Tripoli has his um, show Zero over there as well as I think he's pretty much moved everything else over there as well. So Tim Foyle Hat, Punch Drunk, Cash Daddies, that new one with... uh, Conspiracy Social Club, is that it? I haven't checked that one out yet, but I feel like it would make me laugh. Broken Simulation, all the things. This is not meant to be a Sam Tripoli commercial, but I love Sam, so why not? Um, But also, there are a lot of amazing content creators that are really doing like independent journalist work and sharing a lot of truth that is obviously getting, you know completely taken down and buried and thwarted and subverted elsewhere in the more mainstream platforms and Rockfin is committed to not doing that so basically you just pick somebody you want to support and you subscribe to them and like there's so many amazing people there and it's growing all the time and then when you subscribe to them it's 
I think it's $9.99 US a month, which is so low. You get a ton of content unlocked and you get access to everybody's premium content. Oh, one of my favorite. Okay, I'm going to give a shout out to two Canadians over there that I really love. Matt Belair, no relation to me, but we grew up like 40 minutes apart from each other and we're like in the same age bracket. How crazy is that? So Matt Belair is over there and he's doing beautiful work. He always has been. He's also starting to share more of the uh, truth as he sees it but as well as a lot of spiritual content. And David Whitehead, who, as I understand, he's out in Victoria, I think. Anyway, in BC, and he is the truth warrior. And he's like so passionate about sharing the truth. So just want to give a shout out to a couple beautiful divine Canadian brothers there doing, doing God's work. Yeah, so you pay for one subscription to one person that you choose to support and you get access to everyone's premium content so it's like a win 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 patreon unfortunately is a little bit different where you have to like choose to subscribe to every individual creator you know i know it's less than ideal whatever but again it's super accessible for people and it's a great way for me to just answer questions and get information out there for people who, you know, aren't into Facebook. Like I know a lot of you have joined my Facebook group and I love that. And I'm so thankful, but Facebook's also, ugh. and I'm only on there, honestly, for that group and the couple courses that I've run through Facebook. And I just love all of you. So I'm still over there, but I don't really desire to do my business through Facebook. But it's the same deal with Instagram. What can you do? Like, (laughs) I don't even know if I'm going to get like some kind of weird consequence for even like talking smack about them here. That's the direction we're headed in. But those are my honest opinions. So Patreon is Patreon and Rockfin are ways to hear my solo rants my solo riffs on certain topics that I, you know, I'm not really sharing on the podcast anymore, simply because I'm having such incredible conversations with such amazing people. And I have like a huge bank of awesome conversations to roll out. And so yeah, if you want to hear more of Amy specifically, and you don't want to join on Facebook, and or you just appreciate the third eye awakening podcast and you want to support it in any way then patreon or rockfin are brilliant ways to do so and i am committed to making really juicy good content over there for you so that it you get something in exchange you know what i'm saying and just to give you a little teaser of what kind of stuff I have this little list made and I've already started recording things. So the very first piece of content that I shared is it's called what the fuck even is this place or something like that. (laughs) And like, what is going on here? And I just give you my basic summation of what, with no holding back of what's going on. And then I will branch out further around all of that so that's on patreon and it's going up on rockfin today (sighs) and then i have this big list of like how to access past lives how to connect with crystals connecting with our spirit guides this life being a dream you know manifestation riffs because i freaking love talking about that the nature of time and timeline jumping and quantum leaping and what all of that even means and how we do it working with pendulums starseed stuff, shadow work, fairies, um, psychic protection, psychic attack, and, you know, demon frequencies, how we render reality, 3D versus 5D, like what that even means, mission alignment, frequency, sovereignty, and like so many things. So that's the kind of stuff that I'm going to be sharing between those two platforms. Um, Rockfin is going to get like me not holding back at all and just like truly saying (laughs) truly 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 things as I seize them through my own human eyes as well as through the Akashic records and using words that you know I deliberately avoid using here and on my other platforms so that I don't lose 
you know, the beautiful spaces I've cultivated with all of you. So that's that. Come check me out. I have the links in my link tree, which you can find through Instagram most easily in my Instagram bio. But I'm Amy Melissa on Rockfin, but or I mean on Patreon, but somebody had a hard time finding me. So I don't know what the deal is with that. Try to go through my link tree. My website is almost up. I think I'm hoping it'll be done like this month. Um, and then honestly, my website creator is just waiting on me. I'm the worst. I'm so busy. I let myself get so heavily booked with readings, you guys, but I also love it. <laughs> like I truly love, 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 love doing readings. And then what was the other thing? Oh yeah. Oh my God. I created a new course or can I even say I created it? I co-created it. I channeled a new course. It's called the psychic activation course because why make a fancy name when that's actually what it is. And it's like a thick, juicy course about activating your psychic gifts. And it's kind of, it's based totally on what I've learned through the Akashic Records, but also through my own process as a person who totally, totally thought I was a muggle and thought I had no psychic abilities because I didn't understand what psychic abilities actually are, how they actually present themselves, how to unlock them, and all the stuff I kind of learned along the way about the subtleties of it and and navigating that energy and you know how to like not feel like a crazy person and not feel totally overwhelmed and have you know <laughs> like yeah how to not feel like you're nuts anyways and then a whole bunch of other stuff too it's like it's it packs a punch guys I'm so excited about it so anyway I'm just working on the enrollment portal with all the details right now but if you go to my Instagram and you go to my link tree, or if you're in the Facebook group, you can find a post that I recently made about it that gives you an opportunity to sign up for the email list where you'll be the first to find out when that enrollment page goes up. And the email list is no commitment. It's like, it's just so you don't miss this information because I know algorithms and blah, blah, blah. Um, and a lot of people, I'm a terrible marketer and a lot of people tell me that they totally missed that I was putting out this course and I feel like all I was doing was talking about it and everybody probably just wanted me to shut up and yet still people didn't see it because Instagram doesn't, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't care. I don't want to think about algorithms, but so this is just a way to not miss it. So just cause you sign up for the email, um, list, does not mean that you then are committing to signing up for the course. It just means that you get to find out right away when the course details come out and when enrollment opens and look at it and from there decide if you want to do this. So that's what I got for you. Okay, this is like almost a 15 minute ramble. <laughs> I hope you love me anyways. <laughs> okay, without any further ado, enjoy this episode. Yeah. Love you. Thanks guys. Hi everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Third Eye Awakening. Today I have with me Brad Mulhall, who's going to share, you know, just basically like some cool stuff around his awakening journey. And he lives on Vancouver Island. He was born and raised in a small town outside of Vancouver called Dudney. Is that right? That's right. Dudney population 500. <laughs> he has four kids and he works as an underground miner, drill blaster. He comes from a family that has abilities, but totally ignores them or doesn't realize them. I'm really excited to dig into that and just like find out from my own curiosity how that has manifested through your life and the life of your family members. So welcome, Brad. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, I'm excited to talk about this. So why don't you just sort of share a little bit more about yourself and the, you know, the unique life experiences that you've had that kind of let you know that things aren't exactly what they seem or whatever. Yeah, well, I think what's happening, like I've had lots of synchronicities in my life and then just hearing you on uh, tinfoil hat and stuff like that really triggered and sparked like something that I know that I ignore this myself. Like it's hard with 
having kids and a career and everything like that to not make time for yourself to to uh, practice magic or your abilities or, or stuff like that. And it's been right in my face since I was very, very young. And I, you know, once I got a hold of, of you and talked to you, I thought I should start writing that stuff down. And I did. And it's quite a lot of stuff. <laughs> Yeah, I guess where I'm going is that I, I want to pursue a, a path, a, a more spiritual path and a, an awakened path. Because of the, it's been right in my face the whole time. So, yeah, yeah I guess. How has that manifested? Like, what does it look like for you in your life? How so? Like, like when you say it's been right in your face the whole time, like what have, what have been the experiences that you've had or that like the things that you were kind of ignoring or whatever? Oh, tons of stuff. So I'll just start from the beginning from a yeah. young age, young age here. So I used to see this white horse. I don't know what that means when I would be alone in the woods. I grew up quite rural early in the mornings, walking to school, stuff like that. It just always stuck with me. I don't know if anybody knows that that has any, any spiritual significance or not. I've not really ever found anything with it, but Wait, that's always would, stuck with me. Would you see a physical white horse? Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. All the all the time at four or five years old, I'd be off in the distance because sometimes it even came running towards me and I would run away or whatever. So just strange. Like <laughs> then you would go tell your parents to be like, oh yeah, whatever, somebody's horse got out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no big deal. Carry on. And then then it starts getting strange. I used to have a mantis figure, uh, like a praying mantis type figure come into my room <laughs> late at night when I was very young. So Yeah. That was something that was like really traumatizing and scary. And I still have like flashbacks of and, and stuff like that. That doesn't bother me too much anymore, but was pretty traumatizing as a kid. There's no memories beyond it coming in the room. But yeah, so that's pretty nuts. <laughs> yeah, totally. Like I can I can only imagine how traumatizing that would be when you're little to see a gigantic my first encounters with the mantis being, and it was like not, it didn't physically come into my space, which is great. It was more just came to me while I was in a float tank. And, you know, I was like in my 30s. So <laughs> it was jarring enough. <laughs> Never mind being like seeing one in your room when you were a kid. Yeah, no, I was five. It was, it was something else. But like I said, I've never given it much thought after. I mean, what do you, what do you do? Right. It eventually went away probably in early elementary school and yeah I guess then just some of the other things is like I've always been very EMF sensitive uh when I was a kid televisions computer monitors I could feel electricity through electrical cords like I always kind of get a buzz from them and other people grab them so I don't know what you're talking about right and I was like well I can feel it yeah. <laughs> again they think they think you're crazy right I was having out of body dreams again from four or five years old. I'd always get up. I knew I was out of body because I'd get up and try to turn the light on. <laughs> and you can't turn the light on when you're in your astral yeah. body, right? <laughs> you're a little kid. Hey, it's dark in here. It's, you know, it's uh, not happening. But I would even go in, you know, to the living room and see what my parents were watching at night and this and that and, and uh, be able to confirm that the next day, right? Like, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. I got lots of stuff written here. Yeah, so in that small town I grew up in, my family owned the general store, post office. Got everything you need there in that small little town. So I grew up sitting next to the register with my grandfather, and I interacted. I think it's a lot who made me who I am. Tons and tons, hundreds of people a day, always. And I could always sense who was good and who was bad and just had feelings about people, right? Like, that was always very, very strong. And then another thing was that, that was always I worried all the time about people. Hmm. I don't know what that is, but I thought I heard you say that too on one of your podcasts that you it was you or one of your guests was a big worrier mm -hmm. all the time. Anytime an ambulance went by the store, I thought I'd have to check in at my mom's house or this or that, and always worrying about loved ones. Oh, always overactive mind. Okay, yeah, moving on. So I got about, about grade five or six, we went up to and Tipton and we were on a, uh, this goes along with the EMF sensitivity again. You know what like a SETI, a SETI satellite installation is? Yep. They're out listening to the stars and everything like that. So we were to go there, but I couldn't go anywhere near it. I, I had to get let off the bus about a mile before it because of the absolute ringing in my head. I couldn't go anywhere near 
near that place at all. That's and I'm that has to do with EMF, I'm sure, you know. Wow. I don't know. Have you were you ever EMF sensitive too, or are you? Yeah, I am, but not as sensitive as you. But I for sure notice it. I think I'm kind of acclimatized to it so that I notice it more when I've been away camping or something and then I come back to it. But I just like when I was younger or even still, I can feel, even if I can't hear it, I can feel somebody turn on the TV or the microwave yeah. or like an appliance that generates a lot of electricity. I just feel it go on, but it's never been that sensitive to me that I can't be near like a satellite or anything like that. Well, that, yeah, that was just the one time when I was little and I don't know if it's as you get older, you just tune stuff out or what, but I do. Or you, or you get used to it maybe, right? Because you just like, you're live in the world for longer. And so you just sort of like kind of grow a callus over it or something. Yeah. And it really, like what you just said really resonates with me because uh, I'm an underground miner and I go away for two weeks in the bush. There's no cell service. We do have Wi-Fi, but I spend 12 to 14 hours a day under the ground. Well, there's no yeah service. there's no frequencies down there and it, right. it it is like a very peaceful restful place for me <laughs> Does like, that feel really cool okay so my son is he's 16 now but when he was little he wanted to be a hard rock miner that was like a hard rock miner and a paranormal investigator and then there was this show that came on called ghost mine which i swear to god was created just for him it was about hard rock miners mining for gold in oregon and the mines were haunted anyway but i've always thought like it must be such a interesting experience to go underground and be surrounded by those frequencies like the earth resonance does it feel really different to you yeah like and, and it makes you wonder uh before i go off that show yeah my super, my superintendent now he knows all those guys he's from colorado like miners when we have a crew there we're from every corner of the world right yeah kind of a specialized trade so yeah the guy, guy i work with now he knows all those guys personally is it a real <laughs> show is yeah, it he jokes around about those guys yeah yeah but i i try to wonder too like it's that's one of my big things with realizing powers of manifestation it really unfolds down there and i don't know if that has to do with being surrounded by quartz crystal or resonance resonances and frequencies and stuff from stone and rocks right like when I first started, I remember an old guy saying, you know, don't be afraid. The mind, she smells fear. It's, this is no place for cowards. This is the, and you're like, whatever. Well, and then <laughs> as you get older and realize you're like, yeah, I can sense, I can feel once you get into a job, when you're getting, that's where I'm in my flow state of, if anything. Right. And I, when people come there that are scared or new or this or that, you're just like, I don't know. I try to bust it up with Disney songs or make it like lighthearted or this or that. I wasn't treated so nicely when I started, right? So it's funny. It, it's, it's such a funny juxtaposition, miners, from my perception, because it's like on one hand, you you know, you're a super macho gang, like super yeah. manly and whatever. But on the other hand, also very sensitive. And it only makes sense to me because if you go underground where there are different risks. Like, first of all, anybody's going to develop this ability to sense their environment. I mean, kids do it all the time, right? Like, if you think about kids who grew up in a explosive home with parents that, you know, have explosive tempers, kids get so good at reading all of the signs. Oh, yeah. So it's the same if you go underground, like it, it, if it's kind of a, if you can sense an instability, like your body's going to pick up on that, your psyche is going to pick up on that on subtle levels. But I think also when you're underground and there's no light and you're just surrounded by different frequencies, it's like the per perfect conducive environment to develop like your kind of intuitive side. But but they don't want to acknowledge it. It's really funny. Anyway, I just oh yeah, it's that. it's highly instinctual, and it's and like that's one thing is it it it's your senses are like you know that your eyes are taking in a lot more than your brain could process. And so subliminally, you're seeing a fault or a crack in the rock that you might not be picking up right away, or you saw it walking in, or yeah, you know, you, you can't put words to it right away, but you just know something isn't right. 
and obviously the earth moving, especially where I work right now, Vancouver Island is a fault riddled island. It's, it's quite a dangerous mine, Meyer Falls, where I work, very soft ground. And she moves around a lot. And yeah, you got to be a very instinctual person to, or you're not going to be too good at your job, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, but okay. It's, de- it, it's definitely something like you say with the, it, they are sensitive people and they're, they're definitely, it's an alpha male, you know, pack, pecking orders, this and that. And, but they are really, like you said, sensitive people that don't want to admit it. And there's a lot of alcoholism and drug problems and they're not good at life. You know, everybody's divorced. They, they, you're cooped up for two weeks. You come out with a big bag of money and this, and they just, they blow it all on wingdings and coconuts, right? Like (laughs) (laughs) they don't know how to acclimate back to society. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's that thrilling A type personality high adrenaline lifestyle and then you come home and uh, the wife's at work the kids are at work you just oh I take the dogs for another walk again uh what am I gonna do here right (laughs) yeah I bet it's a very specific person that gets drawn to working in the mines and I imagine probably a lot a lot of you are more sensitive than most of you want to admit yeah like I don't I very rarely talk to anybody about this sort of stuff in my life period like it just I I don't know you just find most people shut the stuff down, have blinders on, don't want to deal with. And I've been obsessed with paranormal and stuff since I was, my grandfather got me into Art Bell when I was 12 years old, 13 years old in the early nineties. So, I mean, I was, I was set on an awakening path at a very young age. (laughs) Well, tell me more about your experiences because I totally interrupted you to go off on a tangent about mining, but I'd love to hear more about like what you've experienced in your life. Oh no, mining has, has shaped me and made me who I am. It's one another thing on that, it, that I I regret nothing about doing it. I've been to every corner of Canada. I've met so many amazing people. I've seen so much of the beauty of our land of every every province, right? Mm. Uh, another really cool thing about that is I've got to work it's a lot of native indigenous people work with us because they they're they're with live in close proximity to the mine. And like, I mean, that's another thing that I've just had. They, they're very secretive, very quiet, but for some reason they always seem to fall in my lap and I've talked privately with them, uh, you know, and it's been no doubt in my mind, magic is real. That's not, they tell me stories that they're not supposed to tell people and yeah, shape, shape shifting people, monsters, this, that. And like, these are people that I, I work side by side with my life depends. I mean, when they say something's true, it's true. I mean, I have no, no doubt in my mind about it <laughs> yeah like what what kind of stories have you can you just tell one just medicine men like disappear like shape-shifting in front of their eyes them being out in a long for a long time and like so they say they don't know if it's being crazy but the trees start talking the earth starts talking when they've been out on vision quest alone they're not on any hallucinogens or anything but maybe they're just going you know, cabin fever, stir crazy, but they say the trees start talking to them. And then lots of Sasquatch stuff, lots and lots of Sasquatch stuff, axes stuck up 25 feet in a tree and this and that and harassing them while they're out on hunting parties and just, just lots of cool stories like that. I totally believe in all of that. And I like, I think it's so, it makes so much sense that the trees would start talking to you when you're out on a vision quest. Cause well, I'm, I'm sure the, the circumstances of vision quests are unique to every vision quest and and different groups. But my understanding is it usually involves like abstinence from human communication, sometimes like fasting, even water fasting. And when you're creating this space where there's not so much chatter, like human beings, we're really chattery, you know, like we have a lot of mental chatter. We chatter to each other a lot. We, we occupy a lot of our, our, conscious space with conversation and interaction and when you remove all of that it's it's like the whole world like trees and the earth and everything is already talking we just can't hear it because we're not paying attention we're not dialed into that frequency so I don't know it makes a lot of sense to my brain that that would be yeah like they say we used to speak to the animals and stuff like that right like we're just arrogant and not listening anymore I guess yeah Pretty much. Or like we've allowed ourselves to get really distracted and then we're just like, oh, you know, nothing else. Ta- yeah, then we do get arrogant. You're right. <laughs> yeah. So 
But so as far as I've gotten here so far was to about, this was all before 14 years old. And what happened when I was 14 years old was definitely life changing on, on my path. My mom had a hair salon and I come swinging in the door after school, doing about grade nine and walking through the back of the salon. And this lady screams, wait, stop. Who is that? My mom says, well, that's my son. Get him over here. Get him over here. And she's grabbing me and saying, look at his eyes. Look at it. He's he's a he's a Pleiadian. He's a Plea you I gotta give you this book. I got it in my car and you're one of us. And she's telling me all who I am and what I've come here to do. And and like it was mind blowing. So she gave me bringers of the dawn when I was 14 years old, right? And I'm like, Wow. It really resonated with me, right? <laughs> like that. What did she so what did she see in your eyes? Do you know? I don't know. I just have blue eyes, like just regular eyes. I don't think my whole family has the same eyes. I don't know. Or Irish, Irish blue eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and like, what did she tell you that you're here to do? This is to save the planet. We're here to bring yeah. down and hold down the frequency of the prime creator. And we're fighting the lizards and this. And yeah. like, that's a heavy <laughs> thing to... <laughs> Like yeah. I was, I was way before David Icke, right? Which I, I later also uh, gravitated towards in the early two thousands. You know, that was a whole nother awakening for me. Was nine eleven and my group of friends and everything are very artistic people, musicians, and and in, in college and everything. I mean, they were all over uh, conspiracies, nine eleven, truth, David Icke, the lizard people. That I mean, I was, I was deep, deep, still deep into that. But yeah, a heavy trip for a 14 year old. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You're here to save the world. You're a yeah. million. There's lizard people. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, that, this is like literally, you're, you're going to be blown away. This this is just the beginning. I'm only 14. <laughs> okay. I'm so excited. I'm sorry. I keep interrupting oh, you. <laughs> I'm not sorry. I wasn't cutting you off. So then I had a friend in high school that was having like spiritual problems and stuff like that, kind of hauntings around their house and that I was very close with and my mom was into all that sort of stuff. I knew who to talk to and they got a shaman and to come clear the house. Well, there was some, you know, spooky action, definitely happening, doors slamming, this and that. And the shaman cleared the house. And then he, when all, all of this is said and done, oh, he took me around and he, I guess I'm getting off track here. Anyways, he takes me aside after clearing the house and doing the ceremony and says, you're gifted. <laughs> <laughs> He says, I've been training my whole life to be a warrior, a healer, and a teacher. And he goes, you were born with more energy in you than I am ever going to be able to meditate to attain. Your life's going to be different from here on in. You got to be careful. You got to be live with intention. It, they're they're going to come at you. They're going to I'm like, what the hell, man? Like, <laughs> why are you telling me this? And he takes me around and he goes, he asked me the same thing, like lots of easily knew about me can you feel electricity and he goes watch or you could go around the house and he goes see see if you feel anything pull after the house is clear see if you can find anything around the house any ghost left and i'm going along oh i got like it almost felt like he taught me how to put my left hand out and be feeling and here's one here's one i'm pulling it right here he starts laughing he says come here pop your head out the window <laughs> like right right where the electricity comes into the house like <laughs> Right, right off the pole of that spot in the wall. And he's like, this, this is what it's all about. And the things around you are entities and, and different frequencies and vibrations and energies. And you're, you're highly sensitive to them. Yeah, your life's going to be different from here on in. So that's, you know, again, at 14, I'm a Pleiadian. This is probably about 17. I'm uh, the shaman's telling me I'm going to be on, I should be on a shaman's path and taking this seriously. But I mean, life, life happens. I was a teenager. I was, you know. I, I never got into any of this more than reading a book or two. I mean, Carlos Castaneda, I read all of his stuff at a young age, some, some South, other South American shaman stuff. Yeah. But never really pursued it. And <laughs> the next thing that happened. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got, that all just kind of went by the wayside, you know, high school, all this and that. Later on at about, I think I was about 22, I had kids. My ex and my sister and my mom were all in a coven. And they, like, nothing serious. They just had full moon ceremonies. They practiced uh, practiced a bit of Reiki and stuff like that. And mostly just got together once a month and drank some wine and held at the moon. 
And <laughs> they they had a lady there and she was palm reading one night and I would just come and hang out. And I was like, oh yeah, like, I know this is real, but what are these guys going to get up to? Nothing. And then I think once or twice they helped me get a job, like a mining job. I'm like, oh, well, I guess, yeah, I know there's something to this. And I had things just line up for me the night after a full moon when they all, you know, put their intention to it. But yeah, I'm getting off top here. So the one night there's a palm reader there and she's going along everybody's palms and then she sees mine and freaks right out. <laughs> so I have what's called simian crease. Have you ever heard of that? Yeah, I think it's usually found on, or what the way I learned about it was that it's common on babies born with Down syndrome, I think. Yeah. Yeah, 60% of people, I believe, that have it are born with Down syndrome, I believe. It's like up to like 13% of Asian people have it, but this is only on one hand. I have it on both hands. Wow. Um, yeah, it's a trip. But And then other things I've read, Caucasians, usually only 1% to 4% of people have it on one hand. And again, it's another indicator, like through studies, like that, that all the people that have this are very, very common traits. Very high energy, very one track minded, all kinds of famous people have it, but it's an energy that if it's not harnessed and, and controlled or directed will turn on you. And most, lots of people suffer from addictions and, and, and die from it. And then the energy just consumes them in the end. So, I mean, that, that, that was batting a thousand there by 22 years old and telling me that, <laughs> that I'm a different person here to save the world. I'm a, Pleiadian, a shaman in training, and then uh, <laughs> a, a simian crease. And the one thing that always resonated with me was the story, the legend of Paraki. Have you ever heard of that? No, I haven't. Okay, so it's about people. I think it's in Arkansas. The, the native tribes there, uh, it's been passed down forever. Mm -hmm. So basically, the, if they would screen the ch children that were born with these marks, take them away because they had to be shaman because there was too they're too powerful to go to the dark side they're basically like jedis in training and stuff like that and i was always like oh this is awesome like i, I really resonated with the story and this is cool and apparently like when they first met europeans on they would stick their hand up saying how or hi or like that that's what they thought they were waving at him but what it was to show was they would send their shaman out front if he had those lines when they would meet with other tribes, they were like, hey, we're not messing with them. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they got one of those Parakis. We better back off, right? So I don't know. There's always like crazy, crazy stuff, I guess, too. And I obviously always feel like I have a higher purpose. I should be doing something. I'm not doing it. You know, too busy. I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you keep getting that message, don't you? Yeah, yeah, over and over again. And and I, I don't know where to go with it or just being so busy all the time, you know, practice Kundalini yoga. I messed around with Reiki. Nothing ever seems to stick with me and I don't know why. And I th maybe, you know, I'm a good talker. I know that I talk with people all the time and people tell me they can always open up to me and this and that. I mean, that's might be one way to help heal people. I, I haven't found it yet, but like I said, again, I haven't put a terrible amount of effort into it. I think that's the thing an intention in, into it. Right. You've basically been living like your human life. You're not your Pleiadian life. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I think that's fair. I mean, like, I think, well, everybody is so unique, not just star seeds, of course, but talking about star seeds. I think like some that I've encountered come in and they full on know right from the start. Like, even if they don't necessarily know that they're star seeds, some of them do, though. They know that they're here for a mission. And other ones yeah. are kind of like sleeper agents and they're like, you know, they're, they're feeling very human. And then something happens and it just sort of activates. Like they're like Manchurian candidates for the, the light side. There you go. <laughs> something happens and it activates their mission and they kind of start remembering who they are. And, you know, maybe, <laughs> maybe like, but it's really funny that you've repeatedly been getting that message since you were 14. That's hilarious. And, and you're like, I don't know what you want me to do though. Cause I'm like, I got kids to support. <laughs> I yeah. I got stuff to do, man. I got gold. <laughs> I got gold to dig for here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe it will find you. Maybe it's just like kind of, you know, just been reminding you so you don't forget. 
but and helping you to feel like the experiences that you're having like don't make you like a weirdo or crazy but that actually you're you're like a a dormant jedi well that was exactly why i wanted to do this there was things like it was really bugging me since when was it i think it was after christmas just before i uh heard you on uh tinfoil hat i'm a big i'm a big advocate of <laughs> so just make you sound even crazier of mushrooms mm-hmm. and i was on on a bit of a i don't normally take a macro dose like very rarely a couple times a year i'm big time on microdosing. that it was a life-changing thing for me as far as depression and anxiety i started about two years ago and so i'm a huge advocate for microdosing. but in the early 2021 I had taken a a big dose a, a macro dose and it was like really evident like a trip like you know who you are you gotta get started you gotta and I made a commitment and said okay yeah like I got it but like what 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 do you want me to do where do I go I need guidance I need help I, I always get signs and confirmations right little synchronicities helping me guiding me just with books with anything like never hearing of a concept before and then all of a sudden it's just like hitting you in the face over two or three days over and over and over again you're like okay i'll look into that right Mm -hmm. and it was it was within a very short time once i decided that i heard you on the tinfoil hat and everything you were saying really resonated with me with the sensitivities the akashic records talking about lizard people this and i'm like all right this is my kind of crazy (laughs) (laughs) yeah it's really been interesting to me because since i started well i guess i started openly sharing about it like I took the big leap through all of my fear of, of talking about this publicly because I used to keep it to myself like closetedly for most of my adulthood. And then I guess it was in 2019 that I was like, I could feel my mission and it was like becoming painful. Like the best description, there's this Anais Nin quote and I don't have it in front of me, so I'm going to kind of screw it up. But she said like, and then came the time where staying small tight in the bud was more painful than the pain of blooming and that was like so how it felt like the the mission was like you have to do this yeah (laughs) so finally but I was so afraid of ridicule and so afraid of rejection and being outcast and ostracized and completely belittled and dismissed and and then it was to the point where my psyche was like you're gonna die if you do this don't do it don't do it you're gonna die but I knew obviously I wasn't gonna die because you know we don't live in those times anymore like I knew that was past life stuff and collective wounding and and stuff but anyway so I started talking about it and it's grown and the community's just grown and it's just so interesting to come into connection with so many people such as yourself and and be like oh yeah we're all talking the same kind of crazy it's just that we feel separate physically a lot of us you know like there's not a lot of physical people in our physical world that resonate with this but there are a ton of us yeah oh for sure and the the connection like i said uh my kids my son has the crease on on one hand i want to be a good example for them to not shy away from this sort of stuff and, and to explore it like my sister me and her we we go on each other's dreams and stuff all the time and she lives hundreds and hundreds of kilometers away but every she's a nurse with three kids right like she's not exploring her (laughs) psychic abilities or anything at all we just have odd dreams sometimes and she phones me and is like were you in my dream yeah that was me yeah okay (laughs) but thank you is that the nurse's station the other night i hit up the whole family there last week i think my mom and my sister anyways and i was like oh man i've been uh I've been going right out of body right away coming off a night shift. I've been doing these awesome 528 Hertz frequency off the YouTube there. Yeah. And he's like, I was sitting in my nurse's station. I was just about falling asleep on my break. And she's like, you screamed right in my ear. (laughs) She's like, you screamed Mary right in my ear. And then my mom, she said right at the same time that I would be starting to hit my astral body, five in the morning, 530 in the morning, same thing. She said she's just getting up in her room and she heard me yell right at her, Kathy. <laughs> That's so amazing. Cruising around harassing them. Like I I don't, I'm not cognizant of that. I don't remember that. I 
I start going down this psychedelic looking portal and out of my body and this and that. I don't, I'm not going out and bugging them on purpose, but apparently I'm going and visiting them. <laughs> That's so cool. That's so freaking cool that they like both had that experience and can corroborate it you know with each other and for you and just that's awesome I'm so curious do you have like any sense of like is there anything pulling towards you to as you because you said that you you're ready to start exploring this stuff like you feel like it's time is there any aspect of any of it that's pulling you to explore it more deeply I don't know just knowing that like it's always been thrown in my face to that this is my path like but yeah I want to go like I was told to <laughs> at a young age on on a shaman's path and a healer's path but I don't know what that entails or where to go or besides just starting to study and starting to talk to people like this right like mm -hmm. I think maybe even starting to do something I've been talking with my son and he says I I need a podcast and he set me up one of those says, you should be talking to people start talking to the native shaman around here and the healers and stuff like that I'm like yeah you're right that's definitely the path I should be going down. So he's trying to, I don't know how to do any of that sort of stuff. So he's setting that up for me. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. It's going to be, and it's going to, it's going to be called Paraki. That's P E R A K E E. So I, it's not done yet, but maybe by the time you got the pod, you know, this podcast out or in the yep. next few, uh, next few months. And I'll definitely hit you up for an interview. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And even like, just let me know and you get it out and I'll promote it for you too. Or like share it, you know, on my Facebook group and on my Instagram and stuff and send listeners over your way that I think I was going to say that too. I was going to say, if it, if it feels like a shaman's path is what's calling you, you should probably talk to some shaman and sort of find out like what, what that even means. Right. Because it's, you know yeah that's that's where i'm at like i'm like you get all these signs and things it's like where do you go when do you want me to find time to do <laughs> to do this or where do i go i spend a lot of time like where i get my answers and stuff is walking with my dogs i got fortune of living right beside the ocean the rainforest the mountains i spend a lot of time hiking and being in nature and that's really my grounding is probably quite naturally because i spend most of the time in the earth ground, grounded right so mm -hmm. I gravitate to it coming to is that I have to pursue this path, but I have no idea how to do it. Yeah. So, talking with people and I guess starting, I guess not being a chicken shit anymore and <laughs> opening up and telling the world what, what a freak I am is definitely like a step, a step towards a step in the right direction. I would say. Yeah. Well, like I said, I learned, I learned that as I walked through that, like, Oh wow. There's so many of us. And like, I PS, I did not get ridiculed at all. Like I'm sure that, certain people in my life exercise judgment and that's fine, but they're not, they're not pushy or overt around it. Nobody in my life is critical of me. So it's all imaginary fear. Everybody who's walking around feeling closeted and like afraid of ridicule and rejection. I think it's like, and even if it happens, the, the, the feeling of like freedom and actually being in for, at least for me being in my authenticity and not ha feeling like I have to hide something that comprises like 90% of who I am anymore feels like so worth it that even if anybody was ridiculing me I'd be like no it's cool it's fine you're allowed to think that um, yeah I'm not what's the one that's ever cared what other people think it's just still a great it. thing to go tell people that you're an alien here to save the world <laughs> hi I was born as a human but I'm actually from yeah a different star system i know the star system right over here yeah <laughs> have you ever connected or tried connecting with the pleiadian frequency beyond reading bringers of the dawn no no maybe that's something that's uh i should do <laughs> uh, like how are you doing that through meditation or yeah i mean i don't really over connect with mine personally like it's not something that i deeply explore it was sort of when I finally like accepted like oh yeah no I really am not air quotes from here then I just felt better like that was all I kind of needed to know and I received some basic information and then apart from that I know some people are really strong starseed workers and I'm more I don't know the Akashic Records is just my place so yeah that, that's where I spend most of my time but I was just curious like if you have any sense of what the Pleiadian frequency or characteristics 
feels like to you? No, no, I'm lost there. <laughs> I'm All right. completely lost. <laughs> well, once you've explored it, then we can have a conversation about that. <laughs> for sure, for sure. But this is so interesting. It's really funny. P.S. listeners, when Brad booked this conversation, he was like, I don't know if I can fill up an hour. Like, I don't know what to talk about. <laughs> I feel like, yeah, no, you have lots. You have lots there. <laughs> yeah, that's quite the story. And I, I don't know where to go with it. I think yeah, just continuing conversations, definitely looking into shamanism, Pleiadian frequencies and stuff like stuff like that is, is definitely the way to go. And hopefully one day I have a pod, podcast of my own would be a dream because I just love talking like I'm podcast junkie underground at work. They're in my they're in my ear all day in my, in my ear, but I listen to every conspiracy and spiritual one that's out there. I really bit of an expert on podcasts. I know podcasts are amazing. They're I feel like they're like you know one of the it's kind of a frontier like it's becoming more populated but it's still an area where there's not there's a lot more freedom basically is what i'm trying to say like it's more of a lawless place where you get to say what you want to say and yeah, not worry so much about being you know censored or have it, it having a negative effect on on your life in some way for sharing and like yeah totally and and it's like the intellectual pushback i think too to all the 30 second sound bite rehearsed question stuff like people just garbage that people don't want to consume anymore like that's one thing that i'm very sensitive to is always having tv the phones everything like that like they make me not feel good being around them and i can get drawn into them just like anybody staring at facebook shows or this or that and like is this really what i should be doing with my time like it literally makes me feel not good dirty like once you get hooked into into something something like that right yeah it's really it's got a really grimy frequency doesn't it yeah a hundred percent a hundred percent so do you believe in lizard people i don't know <laughs> i think I, I don't know if i to define what they are like if they're interdimensional or frequency or if that's it's kind of like how i with everything with ghosts or aliens or this or that on what what the definition of that is just out in another dimension, another frequency off or this that. I definitely think that there are entities and, and that's how they've been referred to that feed off of people and and you know, are those ghosts, are those lizards? I remember reading Castaneda at a young age and the big realization of of the shaman in training when he freaked out at the end was because he's like, We're food, we're food for other beings, right? And uh, sorry to tell you, but that's the way it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I definitely know know that to be true, and have had that you know evidence put in front of me time and time again, right? Yeah, I feel like the evidence is like, I mean, I know people are still denying it. I was going to say it's undeniable, but I'm like, no, no, yeah. there's still lots of people denying it. But it's it's a uh, it's much harder to deny these days. Like it's it's being revealed, you know, much more openly that whatever whatever they are. I wrestle with that a lot too, because I, I'm like, on one hand that, that really makes sense to me. And I had the craziest experience last year. I'm still trying to digest it. I think I shared it on the podcast I don't know, last year in February, like literally a year ago, where the whole entire month I had incredible anxiety, like probably the worst anxiety I'd ever had. And I'd had anxiety so bad that I went on medication for it, but I didn't have any medication. And I just like, I don't know, I didn't, I didn't get around to going to my doctor and I just wanted to see if I could manage it on my own. But it was so bad that my face broke out in crazy hives where I would wake up in the morning and hardly be able to open my eyes. And so I think it had to do with like sensing everything that was coming before I knew it was coming uh, for a while. I thought it was a Kundalini thing, but I don't think it was. And the reason I thought it was a Kundalini experience was because I saw, I just kept having encounters with snakes. Like one time I was at a beach that I've been at, you know, like countless times in my life, that exact beach. Yeah. And I was just sitting there watching my daughter and I looked to my left and there was a snake slithering out from behind me to my left. And I looked to my right and there was another one to my right. And I've been there so many times. I've seen water snakes, but 
never come that close to me, two of them at the time. And now looking back, I'm like, oh, it's that, it was just sort of a, a symbol of that frequency being all around me everywhere. And, right. and anyway, so sometimes I'm like, well, maybe it is literal and maybe they are interdimensional beings that have lizard like properties. And other times I'm like, maybe it's not literal and maybe they are you know the human beings who have practiced these weird sort of rituals of tra- traumatizing their young so yeah. badly for so many generations that you know like there's so much trauma and pain there that you disconnect from your heart entirely because to feel Empathy means you can feel your own trauma. And so you just completely shut it off and you go into your like self-serving lizard brain. I don't know. But right. Yeah. It could be representative of the lizard brain, the symbolism for that too, or are they interdimensional beings? But it's, there's definitely something to it. And that's been in my face forever. And it's, it's impossible or hard to explain to people my base of knowledge or my, my evidence, because I've always been a seeker and I've, listen to everything and explored everything all these different concepts and ideas and i don't lots of people i say you believe in that you believe in those conspiracies no i don't believe in any of them i consider all of them and i start seeing synchronicities and different things and similarities and start finding my own truth through it sifting my way through it you know what i mean I'm like oh that shows up here that shows up there so it makes sense right like which i think uh, is like ultimately the most important strategy because because I really believe like even going into the Akashic records, I'll always be transparent with everybody that like anybody who is a, who receives information psychically, whether it's from the Akashic records or any other modality, we are all filtering very abstract, non-physical information through our own human psyche. And, and so right. it's full of biases and, you know, you like the more I do it, the better I get it feeling those and being able to detach from them, but they're still going to be there. Like all of my symbols are unique to me. Like dream dictionaries are only so helpful, right? Because we all have our own symbols that our brain creates to understand something. Some of them are universal and some of them are very, very personal. So, and it's the same when we're looking, when we're like truth seekers, like everybody every piece of information we're looking towards, we have to take it with a grain of salt because it's not like that person just magically mystically knows, you know, for like for absolute certain, like it's a fact. It's just that they have a very strong feeling or a very, they've received a very strong download or whatever, or a very strong understanding based on their life experience and they're sharing it. But ultimately all any of us can do is, consider like you said the information that we're drawn to and sort of like piece it together according to our own internal compass of what feels true and what doesn't yeah no and then that's exactly how i i go at it is like i said all all, all the different things and exploring all these different things adding up to myself you can say you can't explain that to anybody and then what they represent to you i like you said dream dictionaries i look at those all the time Sometimes they're spot on. Sometimes they're nowhere near. My dream life is like absolutely insane. It's pretty Mm. much going on all the time, even while I'm awake, like just visions and stuff. And I don't know what the hell they mean, or I see all kinds of crazy things, but it's like the minute my eyes closed, I'm like propelled and projected or cruising the stratosphere or whatever (laughs) instantly, instantly. And I see stuff all day. And sometimes that helps me. Like I never know when, like I can't, call or predict things but i see i have precognitive dreams all the time lots of the time one that happens to me is like say i'm driving down the road and i'll be like oh look there's amy right half a block up and i come up alongside the car oh that's not her and then then 20 feet later there you are there's all kinds of strange things like that constantly happen to me that are, are confirmation but like i i have no idea what to do with it like i say i, I do the different hertz 528 and all the other ones try them the frequencies and yeah i blast right off but i mean i lots of times i have no control over it sometimes i do have control over it sometimes i'm i'm lost i've got no idea what i'm doing <laughs> well and it's so interesting to me that you have this many experiences and they're so vivid and colorful and like even you know verifiable some of them 
and you, like you say, like you're a busy minor and a father of four and you're not, you're doing some things to cultivate it, but not, you know, you're, you're fitting it in around your existing responsibilities. Right. Yeah. I got no choice. Yeah. So uh, I'm like, I'm personally excited to, to sort of journey alongside you and watch as, you know, at whatever time, like, you know, sometimes it's, I really understand having kids. Sometimes you really just can't, there's just not time for it. Right. And you just have to wait till later. Like the parenting is the job and the providing is the job, but I'm, I'm excited to see how it unfolds at such time that you're able to like be more, put more of your time towards it, you know? Well, that, and, it, it's all everything through my experience in many different uh, avenues. It's intention, right? <clears throat> and I've yeah. never had the intention before. And I do now like, okay, I'm wherever this is going, I'm going into this. Let's let's do this. And like even the, my dreams, my visions, and just in the last month or so since I've contacted, you're getting more profound, more in my face, more like all day long vision going in my head. Just a weird, strange things, symbols, people, places, things that I've never seen before. You know, going through the Rolodex up up top, and it's it's crazy. And I think what like everything has to do with intention, and and the way I'm looking at it is like we've given away a lot of the response like our responsibility, most people of our psyche. Yeah. Of everything, of everything in our lives. I, I'm too, I gotta go to work. I'm too busy. I gotta worry about this. I can worry about that. The, our political systems, our healthcare, we give away so much of our uh, sovereignty or our freedom or our mind to other people because we, we don't have the time to take responsibility for it. I've taken responsibility in you know my work life and that's not, if I can apply myself, like I apply myself to my job, to my parenting, if I can, and, and every other aspect of life, if I can do it with this, I think it's going to come up all aces. I mean, I can't see that it, it wouldn't, and I've been really being propelled <laughs> to do it. That's for sure. Yeah, I think you're totally right. I think it is like, exactly. We do give up a lot of our sovereignty, but also like, it's so like the reclamation of that sovereignty is so much more simple than we generally tend to think. And it really is just intention and like, sort of the hard part is like maintaining that attention because we get into the habit of giving up that sovereignty. And so like, you know, it feels like a little bit of work at first to create a new habit of, of maintaining that intention, but I'm not surprised at all to hear. In fact, I'm really glad that you're saying this. I'm not surprised at all to hear that just since you sort of decided to declare it and be like, okay, I'm ready to I don't know where it's going to go, but I'm ready. Uh, yeah. It's just been accelerating because I honest to God, like it's so fun teaching, you know, psychic development. I'm probably an infuriating teacher on some levels to some people who really feel truly disconnected from it. But like, I just, I just believe that it's there already. And just the simple declaration to claim it is like the, the activator like the catalyst and it's like it's just been waiting to come in this whole time and all we need to do is start acknowledging it and it just blooms kind of effortlessly and for some people it's you know like yours are way closer to the surface and I acknowledge that for sure than for some people for some people it's buried really really deeply probably due to past life wounds and you know survival reasons and whatever but I, I think for everybody, ultimately, it's just like having that openness and that curiosity and just sort of letting it, letting it lead the way and letting it take you where it wants to take you. Yeah, it's like, it's like, it's already that reality is already existing. You're just choosing to like vibrate to that frequency, right? Yes, totally. Your, your, your ultimate path, your ultimate fantasy, your ultimate, like you're, you're remembering, right? You yeah. Know? you're not really like it's like you're building something and it's that's the illusion that you're building to i don't know it's all already there you're just remembering who you are you're remembering and coming back and uh there's lots of trippy shows about that did you see that bliss one no <laughs> I, just I haven't that the other, watched that the other day yeah it's it's a matrix style in in a, in a machine and this and that and remembering the real world and yeah lots of uh esoteric symbolism and craziness in it oh maybe it i'll watch that with, with yeah tonight. Where is that? What is that one on? I think I was on Amazon. Okay. I'm going to yeah. look it up. 
pretty trippy. I was just going to ask you, do you still suffer from anxiety and stuff like that? Or constantly? Or that is the- no, no, not constantly. Gee, let me think about the last. I have had bouts of anxiety. This is the first February, actually, in a number of years. Like February, for some reason, I love it, but it always seems to like bring in anxiety. But this year, it didn't, which is wonderful. I'm very thankful. The last, one, I, I'm such a huge advocate for the for the microdosing. Like, the, it, I don't know if you've read or seen the John Hopkins University studies for years and stuff like that. It, it's annihilating anxiety, depression, addictions, people. It saved my life. It turned me right around. And uh, everybody's on anxiety medications. Everybody's on depression medications. I do not trust the pharmaceutical industry at all, right? And I'm like, yeah, just a huge advocate for microdosing. So I uh, just suggest that if you can ever, if you're having troubles like that again. Yeah, um, I absolutely I highly did. recommend it, especially being a sensitive like you are. You're, we're, we're very much the same. Like it, it, it's, a profound experience that the change, like it really turns off the, the inner chatterbox in my head. Mm-hmm. that makes me live in the now. Like it, it, I found it, find it very freeing and it really, really helps. That's amazing. I, I've heard amazing things about microdosing. I briefly tried it for like, like, I mean, like for a month or something like that, uh, last year. And I really enjoyed it. And it was mostly just because I knew I was trying to get pregnant that I thought, Oh, maybe I should stop. Oh, they're harmless. Oh, okay. That's good to know. Yeah. Um, but I, I can totally see how that would like really like not just manage your anxiety. Cause that's the point that you're making, right? Is that it doesn't just manage it. It relieves you of it. Yeah. Because and this is just my perception, but because it sort of opens our understanding, it expands our field of understanding, but on a subtle way. So it's, it's not like when you macrodose, like you're, you know, you're taking a trip into a whole new realm. And if you, if you aren't feeling good and grounded, that can sometimes exacerbate anxiety whereas the microdosing is like just like creaking the door open just a little bit wider to receive more of like a greater expanded understanding of life and feelings of like peace and well-being and connectedness and I think that's why my chronic anxiety went away too because I on my own I just had opened those doors enough to feel at ease with the world like to feel like I understood life enough or this crazy realm. Like I don't have all the answers. That's for sure. But I kind of understand it enough that it doesn't. Yeah. I can be in the present moment. Like I'm not constantly worried about things anymore or feeling activated in my, for me, it was being activated in my fight, flight, or freeze. And freeze was my, that was my coping mechanism that my body just instinctively does was like to huddle up on the couch and rock back and forth for hours. (laughs) Yeah. No, I, I understand. I can come like when, especially when you're a seeker and I've been your whole life. I mean, when you're and reading about dimensions and reptiles and I mean, they can, if it's not giving you a certain amount of anxiety or depression, I, you must not have much going on upstairs for yourself. right? <laughs> and so I found lots of those things just went like one thing I knew how the microdosing really changed me was it wouldn't be all the time, but I got to be a really lightweight with smoking marijuana because sometimes I, that's just uh, life issues probably, right? Pressure, anxiety, worries, bills, kids. One in every 10 to 15 times, I'd have a full-blown panic attack when I smoke too much pot. And I was really, for years, very, very, very light smoker. And then when I, uh, once the microdosing started, it just alleviated that. Now I'm, now I'm a good full-blown pothead again. I'm loving it. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's all I ever wanted. <laughs> <laughs> it's all I ever wanted, yeah. Just give me this, Lord. Just give me this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. And where did you get your, if if you feel comfortable sharing this, if you don't, no worries. But um, when you started microdosing or uh, what, however you are now, like, where did you get your guidelines of, how, like, you know how to how many days to take it what amount to take that kind of stuff oh paul's demands like all i do is read crush books right so i got like the michael paul and paul's demands sacred mushroom they've used a couple different schools of thought on it which is like it's just point a tenth of a gram mm-hmm. and you can either take that my favorite is the five days on two days off 
when you start, I suggest that hit it five days in a row, take two days off. After that, the, the other school of thought on it is one day on two days off one day on two days off. But I recommend if you're starting it, hit the five days on the two days off, then go to the one days on two days off mm -hmm. because it, it, you'll really, really notice it in the five days on and it's nothing you're not tripping out you're not if you feel anything you're you're doing too much mm -hmm. it's it's a tenth of a gram it's nothing but what you feel is just like an overwhelming what i felt happiness goodness i felt like i was 14 or 15 when you just are like riding bikes with your friend not a care in the world you don't have that inner monetary hamster brain talking to you all the time it was just gone and I was like, thank God. <laughs> 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 and it's not always gone. And I, I go on it and I go off it and I microdose with some other things, which is like pretty, pretty cool. And has it's different other benefits and stuff like that. But it sounds like what it does is kind of like release you from the trappings of the, the spell that's cast upon us, the programming. Yeah. Yeah, and it's a hit like like the big the macro doses are a total like dissolving of the ego, right? So it was just helping helping you with that little baby steps at a time. Yeah, little little manageable steps that don't feel so drastic. Yeah, like a, a keeping maintaining a baseline of <laughs> sanity. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. well, Brad, this has been an amazing conversation. It makes totally makes me laugh that you initially were like, I don't really know what I want to talk about. I don't know if I'll be able to fill up an hour. And you easily did. Uh, so you should definitely have a podcast because I feel like, you know, I, I can tell we only just scratched the surface of, you know, what, well, that, what's I, going on with you. And I th I'm going to start that. Keep your keep your eyes out for it. The Paraki. Uh, my son's going to get a Facebook and, and a podcast going for me and like i said to you before i'd rather be the one asking the questions i'm the seeker right i don't i don't know much i mean i could tell my story it's a pretty pretty far out one yeah, <laughs> but like, like, like i said i could feel everything right now once i decided to make that choice then i heard you then uh just the things just are falling in place and i and i just know that and i think this is a path definitely go towards a, a shamanism possibly podcasting and uh I got another another side hustle going on. That's why I talk about uh, the microdosing and that. We I want to help bring it to two people, and a, a good friend of mine already has. If you don't mind me doing a plug, I he, do. He he sells uh, mushroom prints, so that you can grow your own mushrooms at home. Oh, cool! Com completely legal, completely legal, because it's just the spores. That's all all he's selling you, and that's at mushroomprints.com. And it, the biggest thing that he's found with his clients is that it's very finicky, very sterile situation that, to grow these, right? And it is about a 40% failure rate, quite high failure rate of the people sterilizing, sterilizing the soil and getting these things off the ground. Once they get off the ground, they're, they're easy to grow. So we're going to start selling the sterilized soil together. We're going to get a big pressure cooker industrial size one and start doing that so that's this is just all part of everything uh falling into place for me uh, as this has all been uh unfolding and developing uh, once since i've made the choice all these opportunities are arising and hopefully maybe yeah, i won't have to go down in a mine anymore <laughs> and i can concentrate on these sorts of things <laughs> yeah that's amazing i mean it sounds like that's just what's what's happening and that's the trajectory you're on and everybody take note if you're feeling really like stuck on the how you know if you have like a vision but it's not fully formed or you have something that's pulling you in a certain direction but you don't know how it's going to end up and and your your thinking mind is stuck on the how like just fuck it listen listen to brad what he's saying this is how it works and this is the magic is like you just decide to just start and open up to starting and you know start with whatever you can think of and it, it just it just flows in and it flows in in a better way than you know your your how brain could have come up with yeah no it, like everything has significantly changed like i've always always been big time hiker but Hiking two to three times a day, 15 kilometers, uh, workout every day, making time for meditation every day, make, like, just making a conscious effort and intention towards healthier and living and, and psychic development. 
Yeah. I'm so excited to see where it goes for you. And I'm excited for your podcast. And I'm sure we'll have more conversations because like I said, I can tell that we're just just barely scratching the surface. So <laughs> Oh yeah, there's you got a long way to go with this mental case here. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you so much for your time and for sharing, you know, some of your experiences and your life journey so far with us and your perspective. Yeah, I really look forward to talking to you again. And thank you everybody for giving us your beautiful, precious attention today. I hope that this was in some way like, you know, activating and enhancing and nourishing or whatever of your experience I appreciate your attention so much and I hope you have a great day or night wherever you are. I'll catch you on the next episode, everyone. Thank you so much for being here with me on this episode. I appreciate you more than my words could ever say. Please remember to rate, review, subscribe, and share, and I will catch you on the next episode.